One of the most common tasks that a user has to perform with a package manager is to search for packages. Every modern package manager has a utility built into it that will allow you to query the database of packages either installed or available for installation and search through them for things like package names. And Portage is no different. There is the command emerge dash dash search followed by a string to search for that will query the database of packages that Portage has access to and present you some information about the packages you search for. For instance, if I were to do emerge search ffmpeg, you can see that it will bring up a list of packages that have the name ffmpeg somewhere in the name. And this is acceptable. This is a pretty decent search functionality, but Gentoo actually has a much better tool available than the default emerge search command, and that tool is called EIX. Now, as you can see here on the Gentoo Wiki page on the EIX tool, EIX is a set of utilities for searching and diffing local eBuild repositories using a binary cache. Now, what that means is EIX will maintain its own cache, its own database of packages that Portage has access to, and it can perform search queries on that database, and it will present them to you in a prettier way and allow you to do more specialized fine grain searches than the default emerge dash dash search. Now to get EIX on your system you'll want to emerge with sudo privileges of course if you are your regular user app portage EIX and this will download and install EIX on your system. But before you use it the first time you will have to actually perform a little bit of setup. You'll want to run with sudo permissions the command EIX hyphen update. And what this is going to do, I'll go ahead and run it here. What this is going to do is this is going to generate a binary cache for EIX to use. I've just recently done it, so it did it almost immediately. The first time you run this, it might take a moment for it to get finished. By running this command, you've allowed EIX to figure out all of the packages that Portage knows it has access to, either installed or available for installation, and then create its own binary cache that it can use to search against. Now, an important thing to remember about EIX update is that you'll have to run it every time that you do a emaint sync command. That is, every time that you sync Portage to a remote repository with like emerge webr sync, you will have to run EIX update again to let it have an updated version of the binary cache. Now you can do this manually like I just did here. Um, there are a few more automatic ways to do it um, that I'll probably actually cover in a future video, but just know that every time you sync Portage, you're going to have to run EIX update again. Now, as the wiki page said, EIX is actually a series of utilities for searching and diffing this binary cache that it generates. If we bring up the EIX man page right quick, you can see that there are lots of different tools that are associated with EIX. Now, I'm not going to cover every one of these in detail in this video. We're really only going to go over the most basic usage for EIX, namely querying information about packages. If I were to run the command EIX without any arguments, what it will do is it will go through and it will try to generate a list of every package that it knows about. Now it won't display all of these to your terminal immediately because there is an environment variable that is set that determines the maximum number of packages that can be displayed in any one EIX query. As you can see on here, it's, it's EIX limit um, and it's set to 50 by default when you first install EIX. But that's what EIX will do without any arguments. The actual useful functionality of EIX will be to run it with a string to search the cache for. Now, if you run EIX without any options, but with a string such as, say, FFmpeg, what it will do is it will search that cache for any packages with FFmpeg in the name, just like emerge-search will. Notice also how quick it was. It is much quicker than using emerge search because it's using that binary cache. You can see also that the output looks a little bit different. For instance, for the media video FFmpeg package, which I actually have installed as indicated by this I here, you can see that it puts out a whole bunch of information such as the use flags that are installed on it, version information, the installed versions in a, in a formatted list such as this, but that otherwise it looks very similar to the output of emerge search. Now we can pass options to EIX to narrow down the groups of packages that it will actually search for. For instance, if we pass the dash capital I option to EIX, and once again search for FFmpeg, it will only search for packages that are actually installed on the system. So if you want to go through and look at the packages that you have installed and get some information about them, this is a great way to do it. This is a great way to find out 
what use flags you compiled a particular program with. They're going to be here in this installed version, and they're going to be color-coded this sort of magenta color by default. And you can also see the total number of use flags that are available for a given package. That's this huge list up here in the available versions. This is a great way to find out information about a package that you might have originally used something like emerge-pretend to figure out what use flags you had installed a package with. That's certainly what I did before I started using EIX. There are a couple of other options that we can use with EIX. By default, the string that we passed EIX will search in package names, but if we want to search in the package descriptions, then we can do pass the dash capital S option. So let's search EIX dash S FFmpeg. And now this will bring up every package that has the string FFmpeg somewhere in its description. You'll notice that this search is actually case insensitive because it matched this FFmpeg with the two capital Fs but it also matched this lowercase ffmpeg in this package right here. Another option that we can pass to it is the dash capital C option, which will search category names. So for instance, if we want to search dash C x11, this will bring up every package that has the string x11 somewhere in its category, and not necessarily in the actual package name. Now as you can see here, it didn't print all of them out. It said it found 915 matches and only the first 50 were displayed. But this query right here would bring up every single package in every category that has the string x11 somewhere in it. Now these are just some of the search functions that EIX has access to. But as I said, there are lots of other tools that are in the EIX package. And one in particular that's pretty useful is EIX-test-obsolete. What this tool will do is it will go through the binary cache and it will check to see if any of the packages that you actually have installed are obsolete according to your portage version. So we can go ahead and run this and you can see that currently I have no obsolete packages, but if I had some obsolete packages on my system, then they would show up in this search here with information and output similar to the output of just a regular EIX search command. Now one thing that's important to remember is if you don't run that EIX hyphen update before you run EIX test obsolete, there's a chance that you will get false positives in the obsolete test because it's going to have a different version of the binary cache as compared to the actual packages that Portage has access to. So. Once again, it's very important to always run that EIX hyphen update command after every time Portage syncs to a remote repository. Now before I end this video, I want to talk about one more topic, and that is EIX's system-wide configuration file, which for my installation was located at Etsy EIXRC00 hyphen EIXRC. Well, let's go ahead and open up. This file is where you would want to place any kind of special configuration that you want to have for EIXRC. There are a number of environment variables associated with EIX, and if you want them to be different, as it says here, if you want them to differ from the built-in defaults, you should put them here so that you would be basically changing the defaults. For instance, one environment variable that we already know about, let me go back here and go ahead and run this EIXC X11 command again. One environment variable that we already know about is this EIX limit variable, which currently is set to 50. So let's go ahead in here and EIXRC, let's set that EIX limit equals, let's set it to 100. And then if we were to go ahead and run this query again, you can see that only 100 matches are displayed. So that EIXRC file is where you would be setting any kind of environment variables that you want to modify for your EIX query usage. Now, there are lots of environment variables that are available. You can find some information about them in Man EIX and on the Gentoo Wiki page for EIX as well. But as the EIX RC files comments warn, it's probably only a good idea to actually change the variables that you have a reason to change and to leave the others at the default settings. All right, that does it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Um, EIX is a very cool utility. I've gotten a lot of use out of it since I started using it. And actually it's a surprisingly powerful utility that can do a lot of things that I've not covered here. So I'll probably be making videos on it in the future. There's a lot of powerful search functionality that it has, and there's a lot of cool ways to um, tie it into the usage of regular portage that, again, I'll probably be covering in the future. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.